women struggling to get public transport and struggling mm, yeah. to get across the city because they don't understand what the bus drivers are saying. And what that mm. means for them is that they're then really isolated because they don't have mobility. Yeah, so the yeah. more that we can give all of these other skills about confidence and everything, then yeah. the more open their, their environment is to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Becky, just a, a question, because obviously doing this kind of, um, you know, having such an idea and then, you know, starting from scratch and moving forward, your um, supporters in terms of your um, committee, are they made up of friends or business people? What kind of people are they? Well, the committee um, for the co-op uh, was made... The, the people that are members weren't people I knew before. I didn't know them before. Right. Um, there's a local organisation in Southampton called CLEAR, which is City Life Education and Action for Refugees. So they were one of my first ports of call when I started this. And um, a woman, a fantastic woman who works there called Allegra, she became um, my first treasurer. And then there was a, a really mm. well well-linked-up um, woman from the Somali community locally called Amina. She was another committee member. Brilliant. And there was another woman called uh, Dr. Parveen. And they, they were all uh, people that came together and they sort of bought into the vision and, and realised this was something that was going to really help the women they supported. Brilliant. And we've now got a couple more committee members as we've been able to bring more people in. Mm. But, um, yeah, really it does good. need to have a commercial balance. I mean, I, I've got a commercial background, but um, I can't do it all by myself. No, so. yeah. no, it, no it, and it's evidently uh, growing at, yes. virtually as we speak, <laughs> by yes. the sounds of it. Like Topsy. Yes, yes. That's brilliant. Yes. And so in terms of um, some of the women that you are working with, what kind of, you know, when they move on, what kind of things are they getting? Are they getting involved and expanding into other things? Well, we hope so. We haven't got that far yet okay. because it's still quite early. But we, yeah. what yeah. we've started doing, we've, we've said from, I've said from the very beginning that I wanted this to be, you know, an enabling thing and I wanted it to be about moving people on. So one of the things that we provide is access to advisors and sort of uh, signposting to support services. Yeah. And what we've done to make sure that we're bringing the right people in is we've sat with the women and asked them, what do you want to do? Yeah. What do you want to do afterwards? And one of them, who's a really chatty, bright and sparkly woman, really wants to be a receptionist. And right. so, you know, she, she's worked in customer service in her home country and she wants to do that here. So we're, we're looking at ways of supporting the women towards what they want to do. There are other women who want to do care work, mm. um, but they actually want to get qualified in doing care work rather than yes. just doing it, you know, for you know, minimum wage. So... Brilliant. So some of the women, um, in terms of their stories, does, does that, is there ever an opportunity for that to, to take place? Yeah, there is. And it, it's something that I'm really interested in, but, you, you know, obviously you can't really push. And I think no. it's, what I've been surprised by is how many of the women will just talk mm. quite openly. I think what we've managed to do <laughs> is we've created a space that they trust, and that was the really important thing. Yeah, and yeah. I, mean, I, I knew before I started this that issues about mental health were disproportionately mm. high in this group of women. But when they start to tell you that, it's actually, when they start to tell me that, it's, it's really humbling to hear. And I, and I feel really privileged that they trust me to say those things. Yeah. And one of the things that we do want to do is we want to make sure they're getting access to the right sort of support. Because I think for a lot of the women who don't have English or don't have a lot of English, I, I, this is just my opinion, but I think that what happens is they don't really get access to the same support services we'd get. That's they right. just get medication. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's actually, right. there's an awful lot of trauma that could be supported with counselling and other work. Yeah. That would that would be a better solution. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. It's that's quite interesting. It is, and it's the whole intercultural uh, aspect of what you're doing as well that I find uh, fascinating. Where you, you've got women from these different backgrounds who are who are all able to uh, develop team capability together yeah and the, the whole cultural thing it, it, it is no longer um a factor in many ways i guess is it no in in, in some cases it's it, you know it's still apparent and it's interesting when on the odd occasion there will be something said or not said or you'll just see in that way that women do you know that something is happening yeah yeah and it is interesting to note it and to see it but what we've been trying to do since day one is to say that when people are here they're who made your pants people first and foremost. Yeah, We're yeah. a co-op and we work together. Yeah. And um, we've had to make some difficult decisions recently um, mm. about you know, finances because we are struggling. We're very new. This is you know, normal stuff. Yeah. And the women really worked together to come up with their own solution. And that was really great to see that you know, out of nine women in a room, I think six or seven of them spoke up and had different mm. views. Mm. And this is, you know, this is before we've had any training in how to be a co-op. They're just naturally doing it, yes. yeah. which yeah, is yeah. really great. They can see that there's this sort of long-term thing to get to. And so that's what they're, they're aiming for rather than 
sort of worried about the short term. Yeah, yeah. And I think the whole story side of it is is still to emerge in many ways that these, I mean, we're all work in progress, aren't we? We know we're still an ongoing story ourselves. But yeah, I think you come to a point when you're, you have, um, you have significant events in your own story when the story becomes apparent, and and I think you know, with the with the, from what I, I'm hearing from you, Becky, that many of the women in there and your own story as well, it's still emerging to the point where it is ready to be told with with something of at least an interim. Uh, not an end point, but an interim kind of uh, conclusion for now kind of point that, that is a natural process in, in what you're doing with these people. Yeah, I mean, I think so. It's, I mean, one of the things that I've wanted to do from the very start is not just make gorgeous pink ethical knickers, yeah. but to connect people with the people that make their clothes in the same way that, you know, Hugh, Fernley, what's his name, and everyone did with chickens. I wanted people to think about where things come from. Yes. Because, absolutely. you know, I'm, I remember looking at a pair of knickers one day and thinking, they've been to Malaysia. I've never been to Malaysia. Yeah. And just thinking, you know, ha what on earth has happened? And I've been involved in, as I said earlier, human rights work with Amnesty International for quite a long time at a you know, local group level. And I remember doing um, a very important thing for me, which is I, I was filmed writing a letter to the mother of a woman who'd been killed in Central America. And this woman had been killed on her way home from working in a sweatshop. Right. And for me, I just started thinking, how can I wear these things when somebody might have died yeah. for it? And I really want people to, to think about the fact that business doesn't have to be horrible. Business can be mm. good and it can support people. Mm. And it can make really positive changes in people's lives because, you know, these women, they love the fact that they're working. Yeah. They're not yeah. having a handout. They don't want a handout. Absolutely. You know, they want to prove their own worth and they want to be able to say, I did this. When we've explained to them what it means about, you know, they've, they've each got a certain job on a certain day. Mm. They really love that. They know that it's theirs and they know that they stand and fall by how good their work is. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. That's really good. Becky, we're just going to um, play a track just yep. to give you a chance to um, to wet your whistle. Yeah. And, um, and then we're going to come back and ask you more about the social enterprise side of it and very much about the working day. Okay. Okay. Yeah, talk Thanks. in a sec. Okay. <laughs> 